first round. As Peter Bernardi gets us underway, Bavarian SC, the home side wearing the all blues, going from left to right, take on Ford Madison in their chain strip, going from right to left. Bavarian FC have yet to play in a competitive match on this campaign with their opening game of the year canceled due to weather. So we'll see what they have for Ford Madison, a side that have played five matches in USL League One, a new club in a new league. And have certainly started on the right foot. Seven points from their first available five. And in their first home match this past weekend, as ball is given away, Jiro Toyama is heading towards that penalty area. Eight changes for Ford Madison from the team that beat Toronto FC Jr. at the weekend. Paolo Jr., Carter, Carter Manley, and Don Smart all in that team. Only Don Smart plays tonight. He had a goal and two assists in that victory over Toronto FC 2. Well, you would think with eight changes to the Madison side that the, the coach, Daryl Shaw, has decided, you know what, this shouldn't be a problem playing Bavaria. So I'm going to give some of the uh, sort of... Uh, Second stringers, the reserves are run out tonight, and even with them in the team, we should be good enough. That would be the logic in this David versus Goliath match, but you take that approach, maybe Bavarian have even more reason why they could cause a shock here tonight. Left-hand side, Jacob Streicher sends it down the line in the path of Rudy Crossell. will come out for a throw. Mind you, nice kit, Madison, look at that. <laughs> on, you there, can't miss them, can you? Is there a change of flamingo theme strip? Of course, <laughs> flamingo, the bird of the Madison area. In their club crest, and why not pattern a kit after that, as you mentioned in the away pinks? Oh, it looks good. I'm very impressed. It's very smart. I hope they, they, they sort of live up to the shirt and play with excitement and fizz, but you can see they're very, very comfortable on the ball, and a lot of players who have played at a decent level, some still getting in to the sort of pro level only a couple of matches behind them looking forward to seeing Ali and Gunzi 18 years of age from Tanzania there he is on the ball on cue and no matches of a senior type to talk about as yet but potentially you know a future decent play if you can make the team at 18 you've got to have something special he is on loan from Minnesota United who signed in from Czech club MFK Viskov Bavarians will try and play. I was speaking to Tom Zeiss, who's in charge of the UPSL program here at Bavarians. And he was saying that maybe in a normal cup competition, the lower side against the fancied side, to try and sit back and defend. He said, we don't do that at Bavarians. We're going to try and play our game and try and play our way and beat forward Madison in that fashion. Well, it'd be wonderful to see it. Should make for a great game. I mean, what you normally assume the semi-pro team would do would play long high balls into the box, but so far, they've been trying to knock it around the team in blue, and uh, all credit to them. Well taken there by Brian Bement. Since Carl Schneider on his way down that left-hand side, the native of Madison, Wisconsin, the first ever Madison native to sign for this club. Played in the penalty here. Bement on the turn, trying to dig it into the path of Smart. We'll come out to this right-hand side. Opportunity on here for Ford Madison. The strike comes in. And it hits the stanchion in behind the goal on the attempt from J.C. Banks. Just proving that they have the, the ability of the visiting team. That's a good strike from J.C. Banks, and the goalkeeper was, was stretching just to cover his near post. It's good to see it again. It's hard to see what happens there, but certainly he wasn't too far off, J.C. Banks. Back stanchion, 29 years of age, J.C. Banks. As you mentioned, father played for Bavarians. Went on to make... 36 appearances for the United States, including part of the qualifying campaign that sent the U.S. to their first World Cup of the modern era in 1990. Of course, they hosted in 1994, but the goal was to qualify for 1990 to show they are a side to be reckoned with on the world stage. And thanks part of that team that was unheralded, but they managed to qualify for the World Cup at a time when that might not have been considered a sporting priority in this country. Game has come a long way in the 30 years since. It certainly has. The way the USL is going, the number of teams that are joining, and the standard of the young players is really super impressive. And uh, love watching the USL and now the Open Cup as well. And by the way, you can see a little bit of wind tugging at the shirts of the players, so the conditions might have a part to play in this game. Carl Schneider. 
towards that byline, trying to keep it in play. The low cross is in, trying to take down there was Bement. And it might come to Schneider on the edge of the penalty area. The clearance is attempted. We'll come here for the first time strike. And Brandon Eaton sends it onto that adjacent pitch. Very impressive with Bavarian. They try to play that ball out of defense. Maybe a little bit risky. Uh, normally just boot the ball clear, but they try to actually play a couple of one-twos out the box. And uh, they show that they want to play football. Here's the strike. Goes way, way wide there from Brandon Eaton. But I guess that's the, that's the signal. Shoot whenever you can. Goalkeeper Augustin Ray, who is involved in a coaching role at this club. This is the... Former keeper for forward Madison, Ryan Coulter, the goalkeeping coach, is going down there with a head injury, it would appear, to the back of the head of Brody Crossell. That's the clash of heads here as they go for the ball. Brody just throws his head back and smashes it against Connor Tobin. And of course, as the rule is, whenever there's a head injury, got to stop the match immediately, make sure the player's okay. Does he need the doctor to see him? And the answer seems to be no, seems to be fine. And get on with the game. Crosso played collegiately at Loyola and Marquette. The players in this side with professional experience, including Scott Lorenz, who's previously applied his trade in Major League Soccer. As Bavarians will look to play out. Come on, on that left hand side towards Crossel. Goes on first for a throw taken by. Christian Diaz, a player with Liga Mekis experience in Mexico with Atlas and Black Lions. There's one goal in that competition. Scored against Monarcas Morelias. And here he is again on the ball. 28 years of age, the Mexican will move it with thanks. It's a neat football here from Madison. Just controlling the game, moving it around, playing it to feet, keeping control of the ball. And that just helps them get into a dominant position in this particular match. Carl Schneider to take the throw. Forward Madison finally getting their home campaign started a weekend ago. This ball is played to the edge of the penalty area that Bement has done very well to hold up the ball. Leaves it for Jiro Toyama. Here in every forward Madison match so far, three times off the bench. Schneider, his left footed delivery goes all the way through the penalty area, well cut out. Their opening match forward Madison at home 10 days ago featured a full on snowstorm. And it gets snow plows out on ATVs to clear the pitch, which eventually did play as JC Banks tries to win the ball off of Bennett. Bennett will leave it for Brandon Eaton. His strike will go all the way in. And Brandon Eaton has the first goal of US Open Cup for forward Madison. Good strike from Brandon Eaton. He's tried a couple of times and not been successful. Eventually, his strike hits the back of the net. And that was the intention from the beginning. Shoot whenever you can. One of them's eventually gonna go in and it's gone in within nine minutes of this game. Good strike from Brandon Eaton. Beats the goalkeeper just inside the far post and absolute delight for the visiting side in their bright pink. Let's have a look at it again. Let's see how it gets beautifully played to him. Set up there and he hits it first time. Was the goalkeeper, yeah, maybe was a deflection. Maybe the keeper was unsighted because he seemed to be going in a different direction. And it's Eaton who gets the goal. He's one of the few players in this Ford Madison side with US Open Cup experience started for Richmond kickers against Philadelphia Union in last year's competition. Now, in his second appearance, getting the goal. Just a little credit there to Brian Bement for setting that up with a lovely little pass, perfectly weighted. And I think if we get to see it again sometime, there might be a deflection there because Augustine Ray in goals was going one direction and suddenly had to change and go back the other way and couldn't quite reach the ball. Sean Russell. Played with Ford Madison assistant manager Neil Lavati in Richmond Kickers a year ago. A few of the Richmond players coming over. Ngansi. White sprayed the ball on it. Well cut out by Bavarian's Logan Andrick. He's trying to send it forward towards his brother Braden and now Sean Russell. 
to establish his position and boot the ball clear for Eaton. Fort Madison lead by a goal to nil. Larian at the moment struggling to keep hold of the ball. As the time ball comes off of Logan Endrick. They're on there from Alexander Masbrook. Going down there, Crossell, and a free kick for Bavarians as Banks went through him. Or rather, it was Diaz. Well, here's a chance for Bavarian. If you've got a free kick out there, do you not just throw it into the box, get everybody in? You're one nil down early on in the game. You want to get back on level terms as quickly as possible, get that crowd fired up. So here's a chance to put a decent ball in the box and see if one of your big central defenders can get on the end of it. Seems to be some hold up. The referee's gone off up, out of our picture to sort something out. Having a little word with the players. Right, almost ready to get on with the game. And then on the edge of the penalty area, it is lofted in. Header came in, it might still fall. It's a decent header there from Nicholas Marshall. Now pulled back. Cut out well there by Eaton. And now a tug there from Toyama, but advantage given. The men continues to do a solid job holding the play up. It's given away. They are an opportunity on here for the variants through Braden Andrick. And now Streicher. Challenge for man on for Brett Dietz, but he managed to play out of it. There's Jagara Zamani. And touch nearly take him out of play there from Logan Andrick. So will leave it short here with Zamani who crosses in and forces Connor Tobin to deal with it and Gansi can take. Ackle came in but the referee allows play to continue. He touched there but again Eaton there. So a flick there from Bemont but come back by Andrick who goes down and now another free kick opportunity on here for Bavarians. Good pressure by Bavarians. They've been pushing and shoving, winning tackles, putting pressure on, winning free kicks and They've really got themselves back in the match here just through willpower and desire. There's the uh, free kick. No real question about that. So, a second opportunity to put that ball right into the danger area. It'll be Scott Lorenz over it with four to aim at. And another joining in the attack there. Dombrowski as the service is in, headed away there by. Diaz, and now Lorenz spraying a good ball out to this left-hand side. Opportunity on here for Bavarians. The service is into the penalty area, got all the way through, but Silvestre able to claim. It's a good ball in, wasn't it? Just fancy, could someone have got on the end of that? Maybe got a toe to it, flick on with the head, but it just shows you that Bavarian can cause this fancy Madison side problems, and they've really pushed hard the last few minutes to try and get back on level terms. Hasn't happened as yet, and I guess if you're Madison, you're away from home, you just want to calm the game down now. Try, oh, I'm going to say, don't give the ball away. <laughs> as Ali and Gansi does there. Streicher. Dietz. It's going to this right-hand side, taken down by Braden Andrick. You can run at Schneider. We'll dink it back for Dietz. The header is in. Uh, it's a bit more like it for Bavarians as the header came in from Scott Lorenz. Silvestri again behind it. Good header from Scott Lorenz. Lovely ball in as well. Couldn't quite get enough power on to bother Brian Silvestri in goals. It shows the intention of this home side, and that was a, a really good opportunity. And uh, so they certainly have Madison pegged back at the moment. Madison side led by manager Daryl Shore time MLS assistant most recently with Rail Salt Lake so a spell as their interim manager more than a decade with Chicago Fire and it's Connor Tobin will spray it for Christian Diaz to chase will run all the way out marshaled by Massbrook for a goal kick here's this replay of the header again it's a it's a lovely ball put in look at the header from Scott Lawrence, just, just slightly behind him. Lovely ball in from Brett Dietz. He just can't quite have enough power to cause Sylvester in goal any problems. 
well taken there by Toyama as the run of Bennett with him will instead leave it with J.C. Banks. Overlapping run coming from Diaz. His first time delivery is lofted in towards Eaton, but cut out on the back post by Zamani. No pink shirts there to claim. Tackle coming in well there from Don Smart. Now Banks into the penalty area. Onto his left, his strike! Just blazing over the bar. And that was a decent opportunity for J.C. Banks. And I think it's actually a save from Augustine Ray. I think he got his fingertips to that. And if so, that's a fantastic save. Great strike there from J.C. Banks. And the goalkeeper having to stretch his full length just to tip that over the crossbar. You are correct indeed, as it is a corner awarded. Let's have a look at it again. J.C. Banks causing all sorts of trouble. Good dispossession there in midfield. J.C. Banks jumps on it. Left foot bends it high. And do we see the touch? There you go. Lovely fingertip save. As the corner came in, the goalkeeper fluffing his lines. Chance on here for Ford Madison. And the first time strike there from Bement straight at goalkeeper Ray. Bement, could he have done better? He's put it, as you say, into the keeper's hands. Could he have knocked it wide of Augustine Ray? That could be seen as a really good chance there for the visiting forward Madison side. Another quality chance on here for Ford Madison who have done well getting forward and of course have the breakthrough through Brandon Eaton. Let's see if we can get a better look at the goal and see if there was indeed a deflection because it certainly had sent the goalkeeper the wrong way unless he just misread the flight of the ball. I do have thought, given the way that the goal transpired, that it was a deflection. Taking away for Don Smart. Well, we had a spell about five minutes ago, fantastic Bavarian pressure, couple of free kicks into the box, but since then, slowly Madison have worked their way back into dominating this game here. They are just keeping possession, controlling, trying to create opportunities. As Toyama tries to get into the other end of this ball from Schneider. It's a good delivery in. Now Bement trying to get turned. Leave it with Banks. And it takes a deflection off a pair of players, including Bement, but eventually clear by Bavarians. Good defense by the Bavarians. There's a, some really good players in this Madison side. Bement and Smart and Toyama giving, and JC Banks giving them all sorts of problems there in defense. But so far, with the exception of the goal, they've managed to deal with it quite well. Crossell. Down the line there from Streacher. Nice touch. Going down though, Crossell, and another free kick awarded. Third in a dangerous area here for Bavarians as Brandon Eaton gives away the foul. Good tactic from Bavarian. You keep winning free kicks in those dangerous areas. Eventually, one good ball in is going to see them get their equalizer. So you're going nowhere on the edge of the box and you get them to concede a free kick. That's good play there by the number 10, Brody Crossell of Bavarian. Now, let's see if they can put a good ball into that box and get themselves back on level terms. Chance on here for Bavarian SC, the winners of the Amateur Cup of 2018. The tournament because of it, as the ball is driven in there, it's Eaton who atones for his foul by heading away. It will still come here for Andrick. Braden Andrick off the ball with his right into the area. Sean Russell away, and eventually clearing his lines. Andrick and Dietz. Streacher taken there by Scott Lorenz. And Streacher play, tries to play, to play the return ball from Dombrowski. Runs out of play for a forward Madison throw in. Once again, good pressure from Bavarian trying to lock Madison in their own half. There you go, winning the ball, putting them under constant pressure. It takes a lot of energy to do that. You can see the blue shirts running and closing down. And the only problem when you're a semi-pro side is, are you as fit as the professionals? And you do all this running, how are you going to survive the last 20 minutes? So, so far, the Blues doing really well, working really hard. And let's see towards the end of the game whether it does impact negatively on their fitness levels. Interesting to see a team in their first foray, foray in this competition make eight changes from the team that won at the weekend. As Connor Tobin will just marshal it out of play. 
managed to, I believe, play it off of Logan Andrick. And the referee blowing his whistle, I believe, to award a throw for, for, for excuse me, for Bavarians. Once again, more pressure. If someone can just get on the end of this throw and hook it into the box. It's another possible opportunity for the blue shirts of Bavarian. Going headed by Diaz, but back in there from Dombrowski, who stays down. The referee allowing play to continue. The chip is onto this left hand side from Dietz. It's a nice ball as well for Logan Andrick. He tries to play it on the ground into the penalty area, but cleared there by forward Madison. Well done by Bement. Left a bit too much work to do there for Toyama, and it runs out of play. Well, you're talking about the eight changes that Madison have made from their most recent USL 1 game, and I'm just guessing it's a squad rotation. They've had a look at Bavarian and gone, well, with all due respect, it's a semi-pro side. We should be able to put out mostly our second string team and still win. And uh, as a coach, you have to rotate. In fact, a lot of teams in Europe, uh, they insist that their cup team is their second string team. And so that's what they're doing here tonight. And so far, you would think Madison look reasonably comfortable. They're one up already. They look very good on the ball. And as hard as Bavarian have tried, they haven't really given Madison too many problems. I don't think they've tested Brian Silvestre in goal in, with any serious shots as yet. As Don Smart able to win the ball, run on there for Toyama, but Smart couldn't quite find the window. And cut out well by Dugara Zamani. As just taking it out of play there was Braden Andrick. And now Toyama cutting onto his right very well. And leaving it with Brandon Eaton. And Banks on the edge of the area can run of the defender towards that byline. And well done there by Streacher to boot it out of play. Good defense here. All the blue shirts back. Trying to deny space. Get as many bodies behind the ball as possible. And slowly push out here and try and intercept the ball but you can see how deep the blue shirts were defending very very deep and making it so difficult for Madison to find space Toyama and Bennett lovely flick play the return ball for the Japanese Colombian who lifts the ball into the penalty area and it goes out of play for a goal kick now, this is hard work for Bavarian just seen a few legs that are struggling to do the runs and again it's, it's the hardest part of a semi-pro versus a pro matches mm. the semi-pros also have wonderful skills but the running the closing down the hard work that the pros can train at every single day that the semi-pros don't have time to do that becomes a hugely telling difference between the two teams thanks Renz playing it off to this left hand side for Crossell. Want to get turned. Mr. Patrick Hodgins of Bavarian watching his side. As it will be another free kick here for Bavarians. Each one of these is dangerous. Let's have a look and see how he gets the free kick, but it's it's good play. Just Knocks the ball past, and then the leg comes in there to trip him up from Don Smart. Now, what can he do with the cross? And it is lofted in towards the edge. Connor Tobin winning the first header, and cleared by Eaton, who is part of this squad rotation. He's making his first appearance of the year. He joins Brian Silvestre and Ali Nganzi. Nakaroop. First ever match in U.S. Open Cup for forward Madison. Bavarians have far more history in this competition, of course, playing as a running club since 1929, the oldest club in this year's tournament. Made the final of the Open Cup in 1994 against Greek American AC. Wow, there's some history there for you. It's going to be very difficult for Bavarian to make the final once again. Never mind just this match, it's what follows with uh, lots of USL teams and then M MLS teams as well. It's extremely difficult, but they're focused only on this match, Bavarian. If they can beat Madison, and this and alone would be a fantastic result for the team in blue. They're 1-0 down already, and it's going to be a big ask.
against a team much higher than them in the leagues. Sean Russell making a run forward from his central defensive position. Schneider turning on it. Trying to poke it towards Bement, but a bit too much pace on it in this first round. Signs from USL League One and League Two, as well as signs from NPSL and local qualifiers, which include Bavarian, one of the amateur champions of 2018. In the second round, USL championship teams will enter, and in the fourth round, sides from Major League Soccer will enter. Once again, some lovely skills from Bavarian. Beautiful ball. Okay, I was about to say, <laughs> if it had gone to the summit, it was a lovely struck ball. <laughs> didn't quite have the direction. But we're seeing some fantastic touches. And again, bear in mind, they're a semi-pro side up against a fully professional team. You know, it's a big difference in, in, in class, in time that you spend training, uh, in your history in the game. I mean, there's a number of MLS forwards uh, players rather in forward medicine that have, have a lot of history at the top top level so you know already this is to, to get to this stage Bavarian 26 minutes in only one nil done they've done really well so far on top of the like of fitness even if you were in full season this is the first competitive match of 2019 for Bavarians not even a match fit yet the Ment leaving it with Schneider Toyama, a lot of joy down this left-hand side for forward Madison. Easy with Nganzi. Maloney from Minnesota United. Is it to Don Smart, the USL League One Player of the Week for his performance a fortnight ago in their last league win over Toronto FC2. A goal and two assists in that one. A 3-1 victory. If you have a look here at... Bavarian, look how, how they've kept all the blue shirts behind the ball. They're literally in the final third of the pitch. And that's why Madison are having to play it around. There's no space for them to play in. And eventually a blue shirt wins it and wins the free kick. So when they defend, Bavarian defend really well. It's the way that many, many teams in Europe now defend. When they haven't got the ball, they drop into the final third. And, and certainly as a semi-pro side, they defend like experts. You would imagine in USL League One, a competitive league that have 10 original teams that there wouldn't really be any clear-cut favorites would there really be any sides setting out to defend quite like that so it could perhaps be first experience for Ford Madison going against a bunker defense like this yeah and it's a defensive system that a lot of teams use now now they've got bodies forward in blue and they attack in numbers Fred Dietz a lot of interchange trying to slide the ball into the penalty area and does so for Logan Andrick Trying to get onto his right, the challenges come in. And cleanly from forward Madison, and the strike coming in from the edge of the penalty area. Dragging wide, but took a deflection on the way through. It will be a corner for Bavarian. A nice little bit of play there, Logan Andrick with a great bit of skill in the box. Took on one, two, three players eventually. I think it was a fourth player who stopped him, but now they've got themselves another set piece, this time a corner. Again, you have to think that eventually they're going to get a shot on target. Decent crowd on hand here as the corner is delivered. He came off a pink shirt last, and the strike from Brett Dietz, perhaps going all the way into the parking lot, perhaps stopping just a bit short. Fans in behind that goal, chasing after a souvenir. <laughs> that was a good chance here for Brett Dietz. I just thought that uh, if he could just get over that ball, he had a chance to get something on target and work Brian Silvestri, but Again, it wasn't an easy strike, bodies all around him, and eventually balloons it way over the bar. But again, look at the blue shirts up front. So they pressurize them. There's a high press. They try and force the turnover, Bavarian. And then when they lose it, they get back quickly behind the ball. That takes a lot of energy. And I'm very curious to see how they go in the last 15 minutes, the team in blue. You do see some fans on their feet without a stand to sit in. Supporting forward Madison, making the hour and 20 minute trip east from Madison in Wisconsin. The ball attempted there is cut out, but Toyama can re retrieve. He'll strike towards goal, and this time, Augustin Ray well behind it. The goalkeeper does well. He gets his body behind the ball. If it ever slips through his hands, his knees and the rest of his body are there, so that's good goalkeeping. Sometimes it can slip. It looks like a cold night, maybe a little bit of dew, so you want to make sure your body's always behind the ball. And then pumps it up 
the pitch to try and relieve a bit of pressure. Let's have a look at the shot again and see if we get a chance to see it from outside the box here. That is Juro Toyama turns, whips it and just tips. You can see just tips in front of Augustine Ray. Not the easiest shot to save, and he does really well, the goalkeeper. Ball cut out there by Sean Russell, a lead for a throw in. This is the first all Wisconsin matchup in the Open Cup since 2003 when Bavarian played Milwaukee Wave United. Of course, one of the benefits of the growth of the game around the country is that it is even making its way to places that were perhaps not thought of as soccer hotbeds, but Madison, Wisconsin now having a side in USL League One. Announced in the last few weeks that Omaha, Nebraska will be receiving a team as well. All over the country for this game. Through it all has been the Open Cup. and post MLS era when flight like club football was maybe not always in front of everyone's mind in sporting terms but the Open Cup third longest domestic cup competition standing in world football behind only England and Scotland this opportunity is on on that far side for the cross to be delivered and it's cut out well there by Diaz and now might there be a chance on the counter attack for Ford Madison Christian Diaz receiving the ball again. And he'll play it forward for Vement to try and win. And it's won well there by Nick Marshall. That's an interesting statue given the third longest cup competition in the world behind England and Scotland. That means it's ahead of Italy and mm -hmm. Spain and Portugal and all the other big powerhouses, Germany. Holland, Germany. Wow, that's a very interesting stat. And one the US should be proud of. Diaz. Ganzi. Current holders of the cup, Houston Dynamo. Allow them to enter the CONCACAF Champions League. As the winner of this competition does get to do. There's an opportunity on here for Toyama to chase. But a fruitless endeavor as it goes out for a goal kick. Champions League football on the line with this competition. Houston getting to do so a year ago, beating Philadelphia Union 3-0 in the final, but it usually isn't on offer mm. in European nations. To play in the Champions League by virtue of winning yeah. the domestic cup, and maybe more clubs would take it seriously if there was. Absolutely, and that's, that, that uh, championship is a huge one to play in, uh, up against the Liga Mekis teams. You really get a chance to, to see how good you are and, and to learn from uh, what is a very, very good league, Liga Mekis. So... I think that tournament's going to grow bigger and bigger as the years go on. And it will rival, maybe not European Champions League for the best players in the world, but certainly in this area, it'll be seen as a, as a top-class tournament, if not already seen as that. Monterrey and Tigres playing in the final of this year's edition. Connor Tobin, and Christian Diaz going his way. It does seem like Ford Madison is... We just dropped the level since getting that opening goal. Not quite as sharp. Yeah, they seem to be just comfortably containing Bavarian. Maybe they feel that the semi-pro team will start to flag in the second half, and that's when they'll step on the gas. No shouts for men on there, but the advantage was given from the previous challenge and a free kick for Bavarian. I think for Bavarian, important to get yourself back in the match. And they've had a few set pieces. They haven't done much with them. I think it's four free kicks in a corner. They haven't really gone on the end of any of them. And they've got enough big players, especially the likes of Zamani, who they need to throw into that box and, and fight for every aerial ball because it's going to be difficult to dribble through a very good Madison defense. A lot easier to go over the top with a, with a set piece right into the box. There's the more obvious routes for less fancied sides in this competition is via set pieces. As you mentioned, they've had a few chances to deliver, but no real clear cut opportunities. Brandon Andrick carries on his way. 
Schneider. Gonzi. Russell. Ford Madison trying to play out as the press applied there by Bavarians. It's a decent ball there from Tobin. Not quite from Diaz. Just manages, just managed to win the ball back. And now Banks. In charge on his way. Sliding the ball on the path to Smart. It's a good ball indeed. Across towards Toyama. Second goal for Ford Madison. And what a counter-attacking move it was. As Don Smart with two assists at the weekend. Now is one in the cup. And Ford Madison lead by two goals to nil. What a good finish from Madison, as you say, a fantastic counter-attack. And to be fair, Bavarian had thrown a number of players forward. They couldn't get them back. Some lovely interplay, great passing, and ultimately a good ball across to Tiyama. He knocks it in the back of the net, gives Augustine Ray goals absolutely no chance here at all. But JC Banks initially starts it off. There's a final ball in there from Don Smart, and Toyama says, thank you very much, 2-0. And now it's real a real mountain to climb for Bavarian. They're 2-0 down against a very good Madison side. And I think their legs are tiring. And it looks like the, the pros are now, they've got this game by the jugular. As the cross is delivered towards that back post, so let's straight flailing at it, and now Schneider to deal with it. Toyama. Makes his third start of the year for Ford Madison. Twice in League One. College player at Florida Gulf Coast. Also playing at MPS level, MPSL level with Brooklyn Italians and FC Wichita. No chances at professional level. Players like the ones at Bavarians who are certainly aspirational. A mountain to climb now is Dombrowski. And Lorenz. Ball between the lines. Trying to take down, there was Andrik. A quick interchange, that one touch. Perhaps just not suiting Bavarians at the moment. You were saying earlier that the Bavarians had told you they were going to attack, and that's exactly how they got caught out there. They had so many numbers forward, and the counter-attack was quick, it was swift. The pace of it just was too much for Bavarians to handle, and that's yeah, it's credit to Bavarians for pushing forward and pushing blue shirts forward, but you leave too many gaps at the back for a professional team like this, and they are going to punish you. Well, that's quite a tackle going through there from Alexander Masbrook. Appeals even for red from the supporters as Brandon Eaton went down. I think the referee is just going to give a normal foul. Yeah, it's, it's not his right foot that wins the ball, it's the left foot that comes in. It's very dangerous. If it catches your standing leg, it can cause all sorts of damage there. So I think Musbrook a little bit lucky not to be given a yellow card, but certainly he'll know that he's on a warning from the ref and he can't do anything wrong the rest of this game, otherwise he will end up in the book. Schneider. We'll deliver a ball into the penalty area. Bemet trying to rise and win it. And it goes just over him. He says thank you. It's a half decent ball. Well, it's actually a decent ball. It's just he's the only one in the box. If you've got two of you, one of you goes near post, one far post. If it's just Bement in the box, it's very difficult to hit one single person from sort of 40 or 50 yards out. Schneider. This is a tough one now for the home crowd. 2-0 down. You know, one nil down, maybe you can get back in the game at two nil down against a team from a much higher level than you. It's a, it's a really difficult one, and the crowd has just got to keep their optimism, keep going, keep supporting the team in blue. They've so far really put up a good show. Yes, they are two nil down, but got to bear in mind, as you say, they haven't even got their season going yet. So they're not match fit up against a much better team, a team that are fully pro. So, yep. Yeah done themselves proud so far. 
It's going to be another tough second half for the Bavarians. Streicher. And taken off it. Scored Madison can break again. Now Bement. Trying to beat two. And the tackle came in and well won there, as it will now be Toyama on the edge. His left-footed strike always headed wide of goal, but well done there by the Varians to snuff out the chance for Brian Bemmon. He knows it as well, Toyama. As he hit it, he turned and said sorry to the others, because if he hits target, there's one or two that could have run in and maybe picked up a rebound off the goalkeeper. But in the end, he's miscued his shot completely. Doesn't trouble Augustine Ray at all. This match take on El Paso Locomotive in the second round. USL Championship side. Another expansion club as well. It's a free kick here for Ford Madison. See Banks getting on the ball there alongside Don Smart and let's see if they can deliver a, deliver a quality ball in the box or one or two of the big boys in the back pushing up there maybe a Connor Tobin or a Sean Russell to try and get in the end of this cross. As Banks delivers in, free header there. It was Sean Russell who had the opportunity but will come out here for Ali Nganzi. As Banks leaves it for Smart, who can keep it in play. The cross is in towards that back post. I think it took a nick on the way through. And it goes sailing out for a throw-in. Yeah, pity for Don Smart there. He had three or four of those pink shirts in the box waiting. And a decent ball in could have caused all sorts of problems for the Bavarians. But in the end, the cross over hit. And Marshall. Well, it's played forward, taken well there by Dombrowski. He's trying to continue his run there with Crossell. The variance is a bit short on ideas going forward at the moment. Throw in here for Christian Diaz. Smart. Taken off it. Dombrowski. What can Bavarian student perhaps create a chance before halftime? Wouldn't mind a goal before the break. A bit of initiative as the challenge came strongly through there from Dombrowski. And a free kick for forward Madison won by Brandon Eaton. They put so much good pressure on Bavarian. Have a look, the number of blue shirts up there. They really do pressure Madison when they have the ball. Problem is, if Madison play through it, there's so much space up front for them to counterattack. So that's always the risk and reward. And it has cost Bavarian at least one of the goals, pushing a lot of men forward. But it's given us some good football to enjoy from the home side. Ngansi. Spray the ball onto the right hand side again, finding Don Smart. There's Banks, Emin, and Eden Tame in the penalty area. They're being told to have a minimum of one minute to be added on at the end of this first half as Diaz into the area, sliding it through towards Bemmett, who can try and win the ball back, but well cleared there by Zamani. It was a dangerous ball fizzing through that six yard area. It certainly was, and uh... Zamani took his time to clear it. He controlled it, moved it forward, picked his spot. So very cool under pressure there. Dogara Zamani. Forward Madison going backward for their keeper, Silvestri. 
He hasn't had much to do, has he, Silvestri? A couple no. of easy catches? Yeah, a couple of easy catches. Nothing that's really stretched him in goals, which is, a, in his, from his point of view, is probably a pity because he wants to show the coach that he can be a regular mm. uh, in this Ford Madison side. In fact, the majority of these players playing to try and be regulars in the first team. And if you're a goalkeeper, you've nothing to do. It's hard to impress your coach. Well, it's interesting at the moment his goalkeeping coach is the player who currently holds the starting job in goal for Madison. Brian Coulter, who was initially brought in to be the goalkeeping coach, but has impressed enough to earn a spot in the side and has started four of their five USL League One matches. Wow. So if your coach is a first team player and he tells you to do exercises that might slow you down and might not make you <laughs> a better goalkeeper, do you That's do them? That's a bit cynical, <laughs> Gary. That's a bit cynical, Gary. <laughs> A one there in the center of the park there by Brett Dietz. And well done there by Logan Andrick to keep it in on this right-hand side as the cross comes in off of Schneider, who's now going to have to put it out of play. As we have now reached the half, Brian Vement and J.C. Banks getting us going as the Flamingos go from left to right. Wearing their pink chain strip with the black accents and the white shorts. The Bavarians, alongside one of the oldest running clubs in this competition, Going from right to left, the semi-pro side out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're in the All Blues tonight, originally founded in this country as Foosball Club Bayern by a group of Germans that migrated from the Bavaria region of Germany. And now, 90 years later, still doing great work in the Milwaukee soccer scene as there is a free kick and a yellow card as well coming for Bavarians. And it will be given here and so free kick opportunity for forward Madison is for the first time Peter Bernardi has written the name down in his book that's a tough situation for the home side Bavarian two goals down against the team from a much higher level You've given a lot of effort in the first half the legs are going to tie as we see it's for Scott Lorenz the yellow card so what's a defending to do here for the team in blue is Lorenz who will go into the book. Now forward Madison. Breakthrough early on in this one. Nine minutes in. Well, might a chance to be on here for Bavarians. On this right hand side for Andrik. Can he pick out the right ball? Two blue shirts to aim at. And the cross came in. It was not a bad one towards Logan Andrik who just bungled it over the bar. Has it hit him in his thigh? A little half chance there for Bavarian. Wouldn't it have been amazing to see them get one and make a real game of this, but ball gets knocked in outside of the right foot, and he gets here just, as you say, can't quite get any strike on it with his foot, so he just gives a thigh to it and it goes over the crossbar, but that'll give the team in blue a little bit of confidence. Well, another giveaway, and might Bavarians be able to do something again here through Logan Andrick. And the... Flag goes up on the far side for a free kick. And Bavarians with another free kick, that pressing game at a halftime interval. Bavarians needing, needing to get probably the early goal if they're going to make a game of this. Absolutely. And wouldn't it be a game if they did pull one back? And it's the captain, Dietz, who leaves it short towards that byline. And they get a cross in. They cannot. Toyama doing very well to defend on that far side. I'm just looking at that and thinking, if you have a free kick out wide, why get intricate on the right-hand side? Why don't you just get it high into the box and see if you can get one of your big men on the end of it? So that's, that's the easiest way for, for teams from lower divisions to beat their, their more sort of superior opposition. And didn't take that opportunity then. You don't see a ton of height in this Bavarian side, but you would think that would be the more likely way for them to score. Mm. It's not always height, sometimes it's commitment in the box that can get you on the end of a, of a cross. Because the team in blue need to get back in this game somehow if they're going to make a, a real close sort of battle. They're 2-0 down at home, they've got one back, as you quite rightly say, would really get the crowd fired up and, and get them something to fight for. Well done there by Marshall. He's cut out. You mentioned the first half how at times Bavarian had 11 men behind the ball. This so many minutes of the second half, it seems more that they're trying to press up and get numbers ahead of the ball and try and win the ball back quickly so they can get 
a goal here in these opening 10 minutes of the second half. There's Bement, who does well just to nick it off of Zamani and out for a corner. The problem with a high press is that you need to get back quickly to defend, and unless you are super fit, it's difficult to do. That's how they conceded the second goal, Bavarian. They were on a high press, and Madison played through it, and then there was acres of space to put their players and their strikers through, which they duly did. So difficult to both defend and have a high press, but at least give Bavarian credit for trying. Don Smart to take the corner towards that near post. Schneider eventually booted away. Smart, though, to retrieve. Don Smart will leave it with Ali and Ganzi on loan from Minnesota United in Major League Soccer. A few players in the Ford Madison team. Although Ganzi the only in the 11 tonight. Wyatt Onsberg, Carter Manley. Mason Toy among those on loan from the club in Major League Soccer. As it is clipped in towards that penalty area, but no one really threatening, and Augustine Ray can claim. And spray out long, trying to take down Andrick. Cross it, Will Schneider. And you mentioned Ali and Gunzi, that 18 years of age. That is a really young age to be knocking on the door of the first team at Minnesota comes from Tanzania, which is not really known as a soccer nation, more of a running nation. But if he's got the running ability and he's got the soccer ability, he could be a great find for Minnesota. And nice idea there from Eden to play it to the feet of Don Smart on the edge of the air, waiting for the run of Banks and plays him in. Here is the native of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But we are playing tonight. Wouldn't have had too many times to play his straight here. As it is into the area, Diaz clips it across, and the header away needed there from Degaro Zamani, and another corner. Some good play down that right-hand side there by J.C. Banks. He's he's really impressed in this game so far, constantly attacking, causing problems, setting up goals, shots on target, and he will get to see it again. Puts a lovely little ball in there and creates the opportunity here. And then just that flick on there right across the goals from Toyama and causing all sorts of problems for that Bavarian defense. Maybe a corner again for Don Smart, has the option short. More than a few pink shirts to aim at in the area. Which he will try to aim to. Ray off his line, but didn't quite get there. Russell trying to strike towards goal, but first a free kick given there against forward Madison for the foul against the Bavarian's goalkeeper. Yeah, coming out really strong there, Augustine Ray. A lot of bodies in front of him, never easy to do it. And uh, if you get blocked, it uh, makes it doubly difficult. There's the cross from Don Smart. Have a look at the goalkeeper. There's a couple of pink shirts piling into, into the goalkeeper and taking out one or two players. So in the end, he gets the free kick. Looked like it was Carl Schneider most got in there. Sean Russell. One appearance in USL before moving to League One club. As more clubs get added into soccer structure here in the U.S., more professional opportunities for players to get games and improve. Also among those attempting to take advantage of that. Smart. And Banks. There's plenty of second division experience in the U.S. Banks with the Minnesota United of NASL. Don Smart with Indy 11 and win the USL Championship. Toyama. This is very, very comfortable for Madison. The tunnel up. They don't have to take risks. They can just keep possession. Let these blue shirts run and chase. And, and they know that the semi pro side will tire towards the end, especially with all this chasing they're doing. Lovely first time touches from Ford Madison as Don Smart is into the penalty area. Don Smart across the face of goal. It was a great strike in from Piment and a great reaction save as well from Augustine Ray. It looked like a brilliant save from the goalkeeper. Difficult to see just whether he knew that he was making the save and, and whether he got his body behind it or whether it just hit him. Let's have a look at it again. The ball knocked in really well and Piment gets on the end of it, as you say, and he gets the effort in. I'm going to give the goalkeeper credit and say he made a wonderful save, but it was hard to see. And 
Now Smart. Where's that penalty spot? Header comes in there from Zamani. The Bavarians still yet to clear their lines. Attempting to do so is Masbrook. He goes down and trying to chase it. And Sean Russell ran into one of the coaches there for Bavarian. Good commitment there from the home side in blue. They really have put their bodies on the line and they've They've run their socks off, literally, as we look at the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and they've, they've really put in a fantastic effort. It must be frustrating to be 2-0 down, having put this effort in. They try to play some good football, as you see now. A little bit risky, perhaps. Are you getting away with a just? Well, not the whole time as Toyama wins the ball for Ford Madison. The tackle comes in strong there from Zamani. And now he is going to be the latest to see the yellow from Peter Bernardi for that rash challenge. Yeah, I'm afraid it is a yellow when you come around the side of a player like that and play right through him then. It's a little bit dangerous. So, yep, great commitment from the Bavarians, but you can't overdo it. Gotta be extremely careful there because another one like that and suddenly it's a red card. So we look just there, he goes through the legs of Toyama. Now it's a dangerous free kick right on the edge of the box. There it is, Zamani into the book. And now a free kick opportunity for forward Madison to perhaps just about wrap this victory up. And it'll be Smart who strikes towards the near post. And Ray had to be alert to it and punches away for a corner. Another good save from Augustine Ray. He's been superb this match. He's been very, very busy, made some excellent saves and once again, he keeps, keeps guard on that goal at the near post. It's smart, who again plays towards the near post, trying to clear it and eventually giving away another corner, Logan Andrick. Referee just having a word here, I'm quite sure what he's saying. The two balls on the pitch, or maybe the blue shirts are too close, they're not 10 yards away. But everything believe, now seems resolved. I believe Andrick thought that the ball was in play for a moment, the referee just establishing the award of a corner. You see his fans on the far side still bundled up. Yeah, it seems a little bit cold there this evening. It's Wisconsin, so. <laughs> That's all you have to say, it's Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> As Smart will loft in and catching practice in the end for Ray. Yeah, good safe hands from the goalkeeper there and uh, no challenge many of the pink shirts so not the best of balls in from Don Smart you either want to go near post or far post he puts it right in the middle keeper makes a good save going long over the top and a chance to take down here for Brody Crossell Ron Schneider will leave it short he left with a delivery you see with plenty of pace got all the way through and Scott Lorenz nearly there to profit at the back post but it runs all the way out and I believe the appeals are that it is a corner it is indeed given by the referee Scott Lorenz just goes down on his knee because had he, have, had he have assumed they all missed it, he could have been on the end and tapped this in to the net. If he'd have just taken the option that everyone misses it, he waits. And when he realizes that it's too late, there he goes down onto his knees. The corner is a decent one to the edge of that six yard area, but well dealt with by Connor Tobin, among others, in the penalty area. Nganzi trying to clear his lines. And Don Smart forced to just put it out of play for a throw in to the hosts pressure for the Bavarians that was a very good corner kick by the way right into the danger area caused all sorts of problems for Madison but here the team in blue are and uh, all, almost all the players in the Madison half looking desperately to get that goal to get them back in this game Andrick and Streacher again lines of a delivery Russell gets his head to it and now Schneider to clear Touch there from Dietz gives it to Eaton. Brandon Eaton trying to get turned. His first appearance of the year for forward Madison. His career club football off to a difficult start for the player. I think to have major ACL surgery. Forced him to miss 2017 and most of, or excuse me, the beginning of 2018 before making a couple of appearances with Richmond kickers. 
match is slowing down here. Zarev has a quiet word here. Free kick against Bavarian. But again, they've shown their commitment. The team in blue, they really have worked hard. They've got stuck in. Yes, you know, a yellow card here and there for maybe over commitment and being overzealous. But you can never question that this team in blue have really put in a, a big, big effort here tonight. And it will be the first change of the match as Francesco Saporito will be the one who comes on. And off is Brody Crossell. Looked in the first half like he might have picked up a knock in the back of his head, but was fit to continue. So first change on the hour mark for Patrick Hodgins just to try and change things here for the variants. Trying to get that surge at the start of the second half. A bit of pressure going forward. But Gary, you certainly talked about in this match how the fitness might be a primary concern for Bavarians. We'll try and add some pressing that only heighten those concerns. Yeah, they have to go for it, don't they, Bavarian? You're 2-0 down with half an hour or so to go. You've, you've got to put the effort in, but they've already put so much running and going up the pitch and chasing back. and. If you're a semi-pro side, you don't get the same level of training that Madison, a professional team, do. And you haven't got match fitness yet, so I wouldn't be surprised if last 10, 15 minutes, the, the legs for the team in blue really, really start to tire. Toyama. Opportunity to deliver. Something that uh, Madison don't want to do is take this too lightly because, as you say, eight changes to this team. That means eight players who don't normally start coming in, trying to impress the coach, Daryl Shaw, and say, hey, putting my hand up, I want to be in the starting 11 next week. And so 2-0 looks good, but you probably want to work right to the end if you're Madison, try and make it three or four and, and uh, try and really impress the coach with your commitment. So I don't see the Madison team letting up too easily. Saporito. Saportito, excuse me. So Vestra here with a, a kick and a nice ball up pitch. Goalkeeper hasn't had too much to do. Here's the substitute, Francesco Saporito. There was no second tee. Streacher. Andrick. First time delivery is not a bad one towards that area, and Schneider read it well. Comes out here to Zamani. Now Dietz, ball between the lines, just trying to attempt the flick on there. Andrick, away by Smart. And the Met with a great ball to the left hand side for Toyama. He needs a couple of runners with him, trying to get turned Toyama. Waiting for his options, goes down on the edge of the area and the free kick is given there against Brett Dietz in a dangerous area. That was a lovely ball. I think it was from Brian Bement. As he got the ball, he held it up and knocked it out wide to Toyama. And he has a good run and draws the foul. Again, in a very dangerous position. So Bavarian will have to be careful here. It's possible from this position to have a shot on goal. Because the keeper's waiting to see if someone gets a touch. And it's very easy for the goalkeeper to misjudge the flight of the ball. Your other option is to put it in the box and try and get one of your big guys on the end of it. See uh, Sean Russell, the big centre back, getting in the box along with Carl Schneider. So nice options from this free kick for Madison. And it is JC Banks who fancies it. This is Dad's former club. JC Banks! Now the Steen Ray able to dive to his right and take care of that one. Goalkeeper once again with a nice save. He really has been. 
busy this evening and good pair of hands. Can't really blame him for either of the goals, so he's put in a decent shift. If I was to guess, I think he's still got a few more saves to come in the remainder of this game. Well done there by Smart to leave it with Gansi. Tobin. Very well to play out for Madison. Both teams attempting to do so on the night. And that one caroming out for a goal kick. You see that wind, uh, it's, if you saw the linesman's flag, it's blowing mm. into the face of Brian Silvestri. Very, very strong wind. And I just wonder if Bavarian can't use it to take some long range shots at the keeper. You have some teams that have already been eliminated from the US Open Cup. 84 teams enter from this first round phase. And a free kick here for, for Madison. The Villages have knocked out Lakeland Tropics 1-1. After 120 minutes, the Villages winning 8-7 on penalties. They go through New York Red Bulls under 23 side. Leading by four goals to three against FC Motown. That one also in the second period of stoppage time. And Richmond Kickers have won by six goals to two against Virginia United. So the Villages and Richmond Kickers, the sides, finally confirmed into the second round of the U.S. Open Cup for Madison. Trying to join those sides that will do so. We just saw a minute ago there the referee having a little chat with Zamani, who's on a yellow card already. And I think the ref basically said to him, one more, one more bad tackle, one more problem, and you'll be off. So Zamani needs to tread very, very lightly. Dombrowski. Andrick. Work there against Schneider, but really had difficulty in wide areas. The variance. It's a bit too much quality out for forward Madison at the moment. Zamani, who can carry on his way, but that touch just a bit too heavy, and Tobin read it well. Dietz. Lovely turn away from the Ment. Once again, Bavarian showing lovely bits of skill here and there, good touches on the ball. They're working hard, they're putting pressure on a, a team that's way above them in, in the league. So if you're a supporter of Bavarian, you've got to be very impressed with their effort so far. Right, back down Andrik and leave it for Saporito. there to find Zamani with some space down this right hand side for the Nigerian. Saparito on a return but it does come for Dietz who couldn't quite play that ball first time to the feet of the right back. Now Bement trying to hold it up. Multiple blue sh shirts near him. Ball might break those lines but no one really there. Mm, good pressure from Bavarian. They seem to be on top at this moment in time. I don't know if Madison have just tapped off because they're 2-0 up and they're just cruising but like I said, these players are playing for a place in their first team. They shouldn't be cruising. Maybe it's just credit to the team in blue that they really have controlled the last five to ten minutes. And that'll be of most concern to the Madison coach, Daryl Shaw. Again, very comfortable Bavarian on the ball. Madison have dropped really deep. They don't seem to be chasing the ball that much, the team in pink. Marshall trying to play it towards the center of the park, but Andrik unable to control. It's really at the moment where Bavarian is just falling a bit short as that ball breaking lines. Passing well between defenders, but it's not really finding too many spaces when going forward. I guess the ultimate aim of, of soccer is to have good shots on goal. It's, it's what you do in that final third that really, really counts. And Madison have had a couple of chances and they're 2-0 up. And Bavarian, although they've played really well, haven't created any problems for Brian Silvestri in goal. And I guess that's the difference in quality between the two teams. Whiting coming together in the center of the park with Eaton and Zamani colliding. Referee allowing advantage. 
Saperito receiving the return ball. It's a nice passing move here for Bavarian, but that ball just a bit heavy there from Saperito towards the path of Streacher. And it comes out for a goal kick. Streacher says, good idea. I was going through, yeah, maybe a little bit off target, but if it had got through, Streacher was in on goal. And it shows you that Bavarian on the edge of doing something good here tonight in terms of scoring. It's Madison who seems to have been in the back foot for quite a while here. So again, huge credit to the home side. You can see that kick, it didn't even reach the halfway line. Look at that throw with the wind behind them. Here as well, if maybe that ball played through there by Saparito carries a bit more when the wind is at play strong as it is tonight. But Bavarians continue to charge forward. Schneider needed to put in the tackle to stop the run there of Lorenz. Throw in for Bavarians. So they are applying a, uh, applying a bit of pressure mm, here. They certainly are. They're very impressive at this stage. This is around the time that you might have thought that fitness could have, could have played a role. Yeah. yeah. And Bavarians seem to be growing into the game. As the long throw is launched in, Lorenz just trying to get anything on it and instead goes out of play for the goal kick. Yeah, maybe they're, they're fitter than I thought. I thought from you know, 20, maybe last 15 minutes, they would struggle. And it's Madison who, they're either very content at 2-0 and they've decided just to sort of see the game out or Bavarian really had them on the back foot and wouldn't have been exciting into the game if Bavarian got just that one goal. A 2-1, that would really shake things up. Tobin launching clear now a chance on here for forward Madison certainly opportunities to hit on the counter Toyama leaving with Brandon Eaton who certainly likes to strike towards goal and it bounces off the top of the bar scored the goal in the first does not mind a strike from long range and Brandon Eaton nearly with a second on the evening Brilliant strike from Eaton. That really is a thunderbolt and smashes against the crossbar. And had Augustine Ray scampering to try and get to the ball. Have a look at it again. Sets it up on his right foot. Absolutely thumps that. And it's dipping at the end. I don't think the keeper would have got it. He hadn't even dived at this stage. He's just watching it as it flies by. That is a fantastic strike. Just grazing off the top of the bar there. And there will be a change as Eric Leonard will come on here for Ford Madison, their first change in this one, as Connor Tobin will come off. Interesting to see the back four coming off. And Tobin is a player who has started every match for Ford Madison, now in both league and cup. So perhaps just a chance for him to get a few minutes on the bench. With Ford Madison leading by two goals to nil away from home against Bavarians SC, the oldest club in this competition, founded in 1929. Now playing in UPSL. This is decent football here from Ford Madison. If it does eventually find Toyama, who can leave it here with Eaton. His touch towards goal a bit heavy. His run impeded. And Bavarians now trying to clear out. Schneider eventually going through the back of Andrick. You have to say, decent play from both sides. Good pressure applied, good ideas. Yep, nice That's touches. Play for throwing. Yeah, nice touches from Madison, but what really surprises me is how Bavarian the effort they're still putting in at this late stage of the game. Is that a block? I think so. I, I think that's, that, that should have been given Brett Dietz there, just stepping across. Gets away with it. I wonder if the referee considers how far gone the ball was. Even without Dietz's intervention, it's probably at the feet of a blue shirt. Possibly, that is true, but once again, blue shirts have the ball in the opponent's half. And they really have had, I would think, the better of the second half, which is amazing to say from a semi-pro side up against a fully professional team. And it is Samani to take the throw. The variants have yet to really trouble Brian Sylvester, as you mentioned, Gary on the night. But it's been a bit better for them in this second half in this build-up, but it's more 
they get towards threatening for Madison that things like that happen. It's Braden and Andruk takes it out of play for a throw in. Vement. Nice little flick there to keep the ball in play, but then gives the ball away. Vement still applying the pressure. There's a lot of great work, Brian Vement. He's had too many attempts on goal from his number nine position. But he does set things up, doesn't he, so well. In fact, he's it was the second goal he set up with a lovely pass. He's a good, clever player, good target man to have. And you've got Don Smart running off him and J.C. Banks and Toyama. So going forward, they look really good, Madison. Of course, they have the two goals just to prove that point. Eaton goes down under the weight of the challenge, but the referee allowing play to continue. Fans in behind the goal. Asking for the foul. The Europe Bavarians again going forward, but Ford Madison doing very well to get numbers behind the ball and again win it. And another tackle there going through J.C. Banks. We have a look here at the tackle coming in on Eaton. So look at Eaton here. He puts his head towards the ball. Mm. He actually goes to head it, and the player doesn't pull out. He just keeps on going there. Stretcher and uh, or stretcher and. <laughs> Oh, Brandon Eating gets a bit of a kick on the head for his trouble. He did move his head towards the ball, to be fair, which is probably why the referee didn't give a free kick. Just going a bit Phil Jones there, wasn't he? <laughs> Diving yes. on the ground, trying to head the ball. A crazy, brave Man United defender. The LA's beginning from him behind that goal. Schneider. Eaton. Gives away. It's about snuffing up that chant from the Madison supporters that have made the trip. Always great to see fans in the commutes necessary to get to the ground as there's a tackle and now a yellow card for the first time for a pink shirt. I believe it'll be Ali and Ganzi into the book. It's a late tackle. For this tackle. Isn't it? Yeah, have a look. Mm. Way, way Ooh. late. Uh, that's a definite yellow and. You would need to be very, very careful because that's heading towards red territory. So Ali and Gunzi gets a warning there. You can see the players committed on both sides. 15 minutes to go. This is typical cup football where in league play they might be winding it down. Instead, all the time there's hope for Bavarian, they will keep pushing forward. And I'm amazed at their fitness levels. That they're still able to, to run and close down and, and match their their, their opponents who come from a much higher level of football. J.C. Banks into the path of Don Smart. Could this be a third for forward, Madison? Slid across the face of goal. Bemmons arriving on the back post, but well cut off there by Bavarians. Smart. He's been a strong performer on the night for forward, Madison. He certainly has done smart and JC Banks out wide along with Toyama have given the Bavarian defense all sorts of headaches here this evening. And of course they've got the two goals to show for it. Toyama towards Eaton. Run from his midfield position. Schneider towards the edge of that area trying to take down Bement. But it feels for handball given on the edge of that area and a free kick for Bavarians. Augustine Ray is going to take this and knock it long. It's only, what, 12 minutes left as a substitution. There will be a change as Scott Lorenz is the one who makes way. It'll be Alexander Perpa. Come on. Second change for Bavarians. A little more than 10 minutes to play. Still looking for any kind of breakthrough, the hosts. Certainly have kept this match very competitive. At this stage, with, with just as you say, 10 minutes or so to go, what you would normally do is you, you tune it up, you just try and play the clock down, keep possession, don't let the team in blue into your box. And, and I guess that's what they're going to try and do, Madison. Keep the ball amongst themselves and just try and wind down that clock. 
get the free kick, slow the pace of the game down. I must admit I'm super impressed with Bavarian because the effort they put in first half, I thought they'd be dead on their feet, especially given that this is the first competitive game of the season. And they're still putting in a shift here right at the end, which um, all credit to the team in blue. Like these last few minutes yield here for Ford Madison. Certainly seen some counter-attacking chances in the second half as Eric Leonard just tries to get it forward. Not smart doing well to ward off Jacob Streacher. And Christian Diaz doing some great work down that right-hand side. Mexico have to throw him but first a change Jeff Michaud will come on and it will be Ali and Ganzi after picking up the yellow will come off mm, sensible change with uh, Ali on that yellow card any missed time tackle would have seen him off and the last thing you need in your tunnel up is to suddenly be down to 10 men so good thinking there from coach Daryl Shaw get some fresh legs on as well Smart. Diaz. Lovely turn there from Michad. Just coming on. Now Eden try to return it for him. Bavarian's doing well just to get in the way, but a lovely idea there from Brandon Eaton. Bavarian's trying to hit on the counter. Sean Russell doing well to snuff out that chance, but does eventually come here for the Bavarian's forward, Andrick. Tries to work his way around, and still Andrick, and still Andrick! By far the best chance of the match for Bavarians, and Logan Andrick just putting it wide. It's a great run from Andrick, absolutely brilliant there. He keeps on going, gets a bit of a, a knock that goes his way, and eventually he's only just right there. That, he wins that tackle just purely by commitment, gets in on the goal there, and just pulls it wide of Silvestre's goal, but what a time to get a chance and what a pity they didn't score 2-1 would have really given us a, a crazy last eight minutes but it stays 2-0 and Madison's still comfortable Zamani and a throw in for Bavarians. Here's that run again from Logan's. He gets, he gets sort of blocked there, but then he wins the tackle absolutely brilliantly, gets himself from goal, goes for the far post, and just pulls it wide, literally by a foot or so. Yes, he's saying to the referee, I was blocked, I was pulled, and yet he still gets through that defense and gets a shot just off goal. now trying to create the chance going down on the edge Andrick but the chance might still be on here and it was the substitute Purpa who again just putting wide and Bavarian supplying the pressure in these final 10 minutes absolutely brilliant from the host Bavarians two really good chances look at that just pure effort commitment desire takes a bit of a deflection I think from the defender coming across there yep now there's a corner can they get that breakthrough Corner delivered it is a decent one. Silvestri up and doing very well to catch in that traffic. That goalkeeper takes a bit of a knock in the process. That's where you need your keeper. Pressure been building. Two shots a goal. Big ball in. He comes and takes. It just calms everything down. And now the visitors can just slow the game down. Get the ball in the opponent's half and just slowly try and wind this clock down. clear so they can get forward and create a few more opportunities. Streetshirt. Throwing for Ford Madison, but first, I believe we'll have another change. I'll tell you that 
had an early upset in the U.S. Open Cup as both teams will use their third change. Zaire Bartley will come on for forward Madison. As USL League Two side, South Georgia, Torment South Georgia Tormenta two, they've knocked out Chattanooga Red Wolves from USL League One out of the competition. We're also in penalties right now in New York as New York Red Bulls under 23 into penalties level at four. Four, four after 120 minutes. So some great action across the competition. You can watch all the games on ESPN Plus as Brian Vement makes way. You're smart. Leaving you here with Michad. In the 83rd minute, Bavarian substitution number 12, De Jesus Herrera for number 5, Ty Dombrowski. Herrera for Dombrowski. Also in the 83rd. Chance here for the home side. Well, they did have possession for a little while. They've got it back. And they're still going strong. They are still putting in those yards and putting on a fantastic show for a semi-pro side. They just can't get that absolutely crucial breakthrough as the defender sees the ball over the line. And now less than five minutes left. And I think they can what is it, to fail honorably. <laughs> the Bavarians. They really have put in a shift tonight. They really have tried. They just haven't had that 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 real sort of quality in the final third, but everything else has been superb. They really have put in the effort. And they've even had a couple of chances in the last five minutes, but overall, it's the quality of medicine up front that secured those two crucial goals. And ever since then, they've really just kept control of the game and just kept Bavarian out of their out of their box until the last few minutes. As Diaz lofts into the area, there's the confirmation of the final change for Bavarians. The, the Jesus Herrera has come on for Ty Dombrowski. Up. Leaving it with Zamani. In the final five minutes, Bavarians at varying times in the second half and looked like they were going to create that chance. They might have just been as well for Logan Andrick. Just put it wide. Lord Madison did a solid job in the second half. 2 0 up. The opening 40 minutes. Smart. Diaz. The tackle coming in strong there from Masbrook. Another good tackle there. Another great effort from the team in blue here. They really have put their bodies on the line and they've pushed themselves to the limit. And they're still attacking here, even with three minutes to go. Facing elimination from the Cup of Variants. Trying to mount last ditch effort here. The cross delivered. Logan Andrick going up. But well dealt with at the back by forward Madison of USL League One. The third tier of US soccer. The new league. Now with ten teams more certainly on the way. Andrick. Towards that penalty area. Can he dig out a cross? It's towards Russell. Might come in here, but well away there by Eaton. And now trying to get turned. And very neatly as well there from Zaire Bartley. Toyama. Tries to continue to send Bartley on his way. Perhaps a bit just too much on it. I guess sort of in summary you could say for Madison, as you mentioned, job well done. They got the goals in the first half. And then from since then, they've just played it comfortably. They haven't given Bavarian any real chances until literally 10 minutes ago when Bavarian had two half-decent chances. And they really have controlled the match, Madison. And they are the professional team, and they've done the professional job. Come along, win comfortably by two goals to nil, and move on to the next round. Some new players in their squad, some run out as well. There you see the handball from Christian Diaz. Or... Do we have a last surprise in the last couple of minutes? Or could we? Could we? It's been done before. Two goals in two minutes. 
boundary into the penalty area, not like that. Oh. Braden Andrick hitting the first man and Michaud and Bartley, but a good step there to win the ball for Bavarians, but that ball just not what was required. Masbrook, Andrick, Streacher, trying to loft the ball forward, trying to win it as well there was Herrera. Herrera trying to turn and play the ball in. But Schneider doing very well to win it back. Now Eaton, he charge on and perhaps get one last goal for Ford Madison. First the tug of the shirt and a free kick. Well, I really hope that this home crowd gives the team in blue a standing ovation at the end of this because Bavarian have really given absolutely everything here tonight. And I hope that crowd applaud the team. It looks like they're going to go down by two goals to nil, the semi-pro side. But I hope they are given a standing ovation and appreciation for the effort. Even there, throwing their bodies on the line. Diaz lofts into the area towards Bartley. As we'll have a minimum of four minutes to be added on at the end of the second half. And Bavarians do anything with it. A lovely bit of skill there from Andruk. Now trying to time the run. Here's the substitute. Saparito, edge of the air, the strike comes in, forcing a save out of Silvestri, who has not had too much work to do, but a decent hit there from Alexander Papa, Purpa. That's a, that's a decent save from the goalkeeper, one of the only saves he's had to make this match, Silvestra, and Purpa testing him. Sort of wish if, uh, if you could for Bavarian, if they had some of this a little bit earlier on, they left all their attack into the last few minutes. The goalkeeper with a decent save. Now a free kick for the home side. And they really are pushing it right up until the dying moments of this game. Free kick well dealt with though by Ford Madison. And now it's Ayer Bartley. Just to calmly see out the last few minutes. We'll loft forward, trying a smart to run onto it, but we'll cut out there by Bavarians at the back. You see the legs just giving out, and Bartley with a strike towards goal. Never really enough power on it. Took a deflection off a blue shirt, but there for Augustine Ray. The traveling Madison supporters since he perhaps Versailles could win their first ever match in the U.S. Open Cup. Trying to play it forward there. Alexander Masbrook. Not much coming from it. And Michaud can play out. And now trying to send Don Smart on his way towards the corner flag or perhaps towards goal. He's doing the smart thing, he's just taking his time, making sure it goes to a pink shirt. Diaz trying to play it towards Bartley. Say that Don Smart <laughs> did the smart thing. I was did waiting, you mean that? I was waiting for you to pick that one up. Hey. <laughs> Look at this, still running. I would have put money on it that a semi-pro team would have been dead on their feet by now especially given the effort they put in first half, defending deep and then pushing up and pressing Madison. But fair dues to Bavarian. There are going to be some tired bodies at the end of this, which is why I think they, they deserve huge applause from the crowd there tonight. This is the side that won two trophies a year ago in UPSL and in the Amateur Cup. I don't expect anything less from Bavarians. Toyama. I guess the Madison fans are already thinking, well, who's up next? Let's see how far we can go in this tournament, and that's what makes the cup a magical thing. It's with the right draws and a bit of luck and some good performances. You can go a long way in this tournament. And it'll be El Paso Locomotive. Second round for the USL Championship away from home. It's going to be a tough one. Great night out for those fans that traveled and a significant occasion. A first ever win in the cup. Ford Madison. And the Flamingos will be through to the next round after a solid performance on the night. First half goals from Brandon Eaton and Jiro Toyama. If the visitors 
progression through to the next round. Bavarians, though, you have to say, a valiant effort. We'll have one last attempt at a consolation goal, perhaps, with a lofted ball into the penalty area. Headers coming in, and there is the full-time whistle. Forward Madison have progressed to the second round of the U.S. Open Cup. They